Hi, this is Mary Poplin with Boris FX. Today, I'm going to show you how to use Power Mesh to apply a face paint effect to your talent. What we're going to do is we're going to focus on tracking and then using Power Mesh with your track and then how to apply an insert in the insert module with that Power Mesh. We're going to take something that looks like this and turn it into this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply Mocha Pro. Now this works in any host, but in this case, we'll be showing you how to do this inside of After Effects, but it works inside of Premiere, Avid, Nuke, etc. Let's launch Mocha and my plugin will read directly from my timeline. Once my footage is populated, I can look at this shot and let's judge where the best spot to start tracking is. We want to look for a place that's largest in frame, least blurry, and most parallel to the camera. But I notice that she puts her hands in front of her face, so we're going to have to account for that. So the first thing that we're going to do, actually, is we're going to make a holdout mat for her hands. Moving to where her hands are, I'll zoom out and use an X-Blind circle to simply draw a shape right around her fingers and hands. I'll switch my tracking options to translation only and hit track backwards. I may have to hand animate some. Now I can simply set an in and out point for my layer. And I have a holdout mat for the hands that go over this talent's face. Now let's talk about how to track her face. I'm going to call this hand holdout. I'm going to make a new layer with my X spline. This new layer will cover her entire face. I'm going to use the add to X spline tool and I'm going to cut out some shapes for her eyes and I'll cut out another shape for her mouth. The reason for this being we don't need her mouth or her eyes to add face paint to this, but we want to make sure that we avoid her eyes when we're tracking and we avoid her mouth when we're tracking. We're going to call this face shape. I'm going to take face shape and drag it under hand holdout. I'm going to turn the gear off for hand holdout because I'm no longer tracking it. And we can also hide it so that we're not looking at it anymore. Let me turn my mats on and show you what we'll be looking at. When we track inside of Mocha, we want to make sure that we are tracking the pixels that we need. In this case, I need her forehead, nose, and cheeks, and I want to avoid her eyes and mouth. So because we used add to X spline, wherever our shapes actually cross, and you can see that they're crossing here, when they're inside of each other, they're subtracted and outside of each other, they're added. So that's the power of using add to X spline. Now, I still need to track this face. And if I tried to use a regular planar track, I don't think I'd get really nice results for my face paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a power mesh track, which is a subplanar track. We're going to start at frame one. And that's because her face is largest in frame, least blurry, and most parallel to the camera. I'm going to say I want to track translation, scale, rotation, shear, perspective, and mesh tracking. And that will automatically generate a mesh for me. I don't want it to automatically generate a mesh, though. I want to use a uniform mesh because automatic is looking for features and uniform is looking for subplanar tracks in a grid. So let's hit generate mesh. And you can see that this is a very high res piece of footage. Now that's great, but because it's a high res piece of footage, our mesh size is too small. Let's jump this to 80 and hit generate mesh. Maybe even 100 generate mesh. All right, so now I have a much more reasonable mesh to deal with, and this is a much more reasonable mesh to track. If I have a bunch of smaller pieces, obviously we're not gonna get as good of a track, and 
Worse than that, it's going to take forever to track. So now what we can do is we can hit track forwards. Notice how a lot of mesh did not get created inside the eyes or mouth. That's because the planar track and the subplanar track that is the power mesh breaks up the data into subplanes, right? And it needs to select those planes one at a time. It will generate them and try to keep them constrained to the mask. That being said, it does cross edges a little bit and you need to be mindful of that. So when you're making holdout mats, make sure your holdout mats are bigger than you think you need. And you'll see how handy that is when her hands start to cross her face. And you'll also see that the holdout shape is going to subtract from the mat. I've left the mat selected so that you can see what pixels we're tracking while we're tracking. And the grid is on for the power mesh so that you can see what the power mesh is doing as we track. I've left the smoothness at a default 50. And the reason for that is smoothness is how much the subplanar tracks, which is the power mesh, how much they adhere to the overall planar track. And if you're tracking something that's really rigid, you want that smoothness to be a higher value. And if you're tracking something that's really jiggly, you want that smoothness to be a lower value. But for skin, the default 50 works just fine. I'm going to let this finish tracking, and then we'll talk a little bit about what we need to do if we need to correct the power mesh. If we feel like our occlusion mask is not doing enough, we can turn it on. We can use our Uber key we can make it a little bit bigger. Let's go back to our tracking layer and hit track forwards. Remember that you can always stop and restart your track. And you can see that making the shape bigger helped quite a bit. What's nice about the subplanar track for the power mesh being driven by the planar track is that even when you have an occlusion go over most of the data, the planar track still guides everything so that the subplanar track still moves about how it should. Now that I've completed my track, you can see there is some slipping, especially around the mouth. Now, because this will affect a little bit of what's happening on the cheeks, I want to correct that. So let me go to my last good frame and we can select these points in a couple of ways and then we can animate them over time to correct them. So first you identify what the problem points are. And in this case, it's these points right here. And you can either select them with the marquee selection tool, which makes a little rectangle, or you can select them with the lasso selection tool, which allows you to draw a shape. Now that I have my points selected, I can make a keyframe. I want to correct this a little bit here and I want to look for the area of the most change, which is going to be right here. All right, that looks better. Now I see one more problem area and that is the side of her cheek right here. So I want to do something around about these points here. So let's draw a marquee selection and let's drag these points back to where they should be. What has happened here is our points have collapsed upon themselves and we don't want that. And you can see it's really quick and easy to correct these points over time. All right, that mesh looks pretty good to me. Let's play it just to be sure. We're looking for any rogue points that look like they float, pop, bounce, or otherwise don't fit in with the rest of the animation of the shot. I'm ignoring these because they're not really relevant to what's happening with my face paint, which is mostly on this part of her face. So now we need to decide what to put on her face and we need to assign it inside of our host. So let's save and let's close. So in After Effects, I can import my insert clip that I want to add and we can drag and drop it into our comp. I'm going to move it underneath our plate and inside of my original Mocha layer, I'm going to go to our module renders 
Under Module Renders, I'm going to use Face Paint as my insert clip. And we're going to say, render our insert composite and check the render box. Now, obviously nothing's gonna render right now because I haven't assigned an insert inside of Mocha, but I'm gonna do that right now. Let's save and launch Mocha. I'll select my face shape layer and go to my insert clip and select insert layer as my input. Now notice that this is not aligned properly. I'm going to show my surface tool so you can see how this is aligning. Obviously that doesn't look correct. Let's turn our power mesh off and let's use expand the planar surface. All right, and now you can see that aspect ratio wise, this is correct, but position wise, it's not correct. So let's move our face paint around on this lovely girl. So far, that's looking pretty good, but I can see that I'm really going to have to sculpt this to make it fit. So first, let's go to our insert module. In our layer options, we're going to say, use the power mesh warp. And you can see that this warps according to my power mesh now. However, I also want to change how this is aligning to her face. So I'm going to select level two and use a grid warp. Now notice that I have a bunch of little points that will determine how I can align this insert. Let's go ahead and turn our show transform tool off and let's turn our surface tool off. Now I can really fine tune how I want this to warp to her face. Let's increase to level four and I'm going to start fine tuning around her eyes and on her cheeks. All right, I feel like that is aligning properly. So now let's check Motion Blur. Motion Blur will go ahead and add Motion Blur to this based on the planar track. Now, I also want to change the blending mode. Let's see what overlay gets us. I might just stick to none and use opacity and just take the opacity down to about 80 for this face paint to keep some details. So now it fits a little bit better in the scene, moves with motion blur, and it warps along with my shot, just like this. Let's save and close Mocha. And you can see this renders right back to my timeline instead of After Effects. And this looks pretty good, but it also looks a little bit flat. So how do I make this not look flat? Well, let me take my original plate and duplicate it. I'm going to delete Mocha off of this and I'm going to call this lighting. Next, I'm going to take my insert render and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to call this matte. Let's take lighting and put it under matte. In matte, I'm going to go to module renders and I'm going to use an insert cutout. All right, what that will do is that will render my insert as just the cutout. Now for lighting, I'm going to use my lighting layer as an alpha mat. And so now I have a cutout face layer over the top of my insert. Let's take the saturation down to zero. And let's use levels to crank up some lighting changes. Just like this. Let's make sure that when she smiles, this covers the crease at her mouth. And it does, good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to blend this back over the top. So we're gonna use this as a multiply or maybe even a soft light. Soft light works pretty well. And let's take our opacity down a little bit. So now we're adding lighting back on top and we get to add a nice overall lighting shift to our paint. 
Now I do have one last thing I want to do, and that is I would like to match the camera blur. So I'm going to put a quick fast lens blur right on top of my insert composite. That's way too high. I need to animate it. So we're going to change this value to zero for right now. And we're going to animate the iris scale. Let's turn Mocha off for a second so that we don't have to worry about rendering this. We just want to match the blur. So right here, the iris scale is still zero and we've made a little keyframe. But right here, we start to blur. So let's change this iris scale to four. Let's change this to one. Back to four. Back to zero. And we should have a nicely animating blur on top of everything that makes it match. So now we'll turn Mocha back on and let's turn our lighting back on. We can take our fast lens blur, copy it, and paste it right back on to our lighting mat. And that adjusts any problem edges that we had. Now the last thing I need to do is roto these hands and put them back on top. To roto the hands back on top, I'm going to duplicate my insert layer and bring it to the top and call it Finger Roto. In Finger Roto, I'm going to take my lens blur off and I'm going to not use a render. Let's launch Mocha. Back in Mocha, I can see my insert and I can see my hands that I need to roto. And you can see we have a hand holdout roto shape here. We're going to take hand holdout roto shape off. And for our insert layer, we're going to take it down to, let's do a just about 20% opacity. I'm doing this so I can see what I have to roto because I don't actually have to roto everything in this shot. I only have to roto where the hands cross my little section here. So I can see that I need to roto the hands over a very small section at the side of her face. I'm going to use my X splines and draw a quick little shape right here over these fingers. We'll call this fingers roto. I'm going to track backwards. And where it really starts to warp, I'm going to take shear off and just use translation scale and rotation. We can also use just one frame of translation to keep scooting it off the screen. And now we can hit track forwards from our origin point. Perfect, that is good enough to cover the section we need to cover. Let's trim our layer just like this and delete any problematic keyframes. Starting back on our original keyframe, let's turn our surface tool off. Let's use our activate quick stabilize mode so that we can keep this nice and centered in our screen. And let's roto these fingers. I'm going to make sure that my edges are perfect. And as usual, we're looking for areas of the most change in detail and then fixing them. This doesn't have to be perfect, but what it does have to be is not noticeable. All right, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to turn my activate quick stabilize mode off. I'm going to turn my Uber key on because that creates a ripple offset for all of my keyframes. For instance, if I need to make this wider, again, you can see that Uber key is a ripple offset. And with that, I'm gonna to go to my motion blur and turn motion blur on. Now this should render with motion blur for us, which is very nice. So let's hit save and let's go to hand holdout. Now hand holdout is way too big for this, but I want to use both because I want to make sure that I'm encompassing her hands as well. So as a rough roto shape for everything else, with my Uber key still on, you can see that I've done a ripple offset 
So what we're going to do is make a nice big garbage mat. And using the Uber key, we'll have a nice soft mask for the hands. And we can always turn back to auto key and adjust any problem areas. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Let's use Uber key and let's add some feathering to this. I'm going to feather this by about 30 pixels. By selecting hand holdout, selecting Uber key, and selecting add soft edge. Let's do 60 pixels. Actually, let's do that. That's a nice soft edge. So that's going to be about 90 pixels of feathering. All right. And if I turn my mat on, you can see what that looks like. So now let's save. And close. And let's go to mat, apply mat. And now you can see my hands are composited back over the top. My finger edge is composited back over the top. And let's do a nice feather of about 10 pixels. So here's our before. And here's our after. Now, this is a slightly complex composite, so I actually ended up using layers in After Effects to composite everything together. If you had a more simple insert, you could actually render that right out of Mocha. If you want to render an insert directly out of Mocha, select the Insert tab, and then select the layer you want to render. Select Render Forwards. Once that render is complete, you can use File, Export Rendered Clip, and then follow the dialog box to render right out of Mocha. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, head on over to www.borisfx.com where you can find forums, support, and more videos just like this one.